My question to you though, because this has happened to us multiple times, is a kid is waiting in line with us and they have an outburst of, wow, why is that guy so small? Yep. Or why is that guy's head so big? Yeah. Okay. How would you like the parent to react? Um... Welcome back to another episode of Raising Heights with Zach and Tori. I'm Zach. I'm Tori. Thank you for being here. Coming back if you've been here before. Thank you for finding us if this is your first time. We're so happy to have you here. We're wrapping up this first season. I know. We're kind of out of order. We're we're out of order. We already filmed 10. But number 10 is going to be a good one. This is going to be a good one. This episode is going to be good. But number 10 is going to be chaotic. chaotic. We might lose some people on. Ten's a little 10. just entertainment. There's <laughs> entertainment. actually There's no not information really anything. being passed. Yeah. So, one hundred percent. That's so true. But we have, we have loved doing this podcast with you guys. We've felt so much support and love from everyone, and we're so grateful to our team at Sweetfish and just for us to be able to sit here and have these conversations with you has been really amazing and we've loved it. We've had yeah. a lot of fun. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, today's episode, I, I'm i excited about today's episode because we really do listen to your comments, questions. Even the negative ones. Even the negative ones. This one's not really that negative though. This one's yeah. a really good one. But before we get there, we're going to do peak and pit today. But like, honestly, the last two weeks at the Roloff household have been absolutely Chaotic. Pitful. Chaotic. <laughs> They're just pits. Yeah. Like, there's just pits left and right. It's going to be hard peak for me to find a peak. You. What's your pit? Well, I think our pit is probably the yeah. same. We had a pipe burst in our kitchen, and I never... It's it was it's devastating. Like, honestly, I, I've felt so drained the last two weeks trying to figure it out because we had a pipe burst we caught it very quickly thank god but hypothetically hypo- well yeah hypothetically <laughs> but um yeah they and it's like they're gonna be able to save our cabinets and our island but wow it's been a nightmare yeah it's been a uh, tough the plastic and when they do these restoration things in your house, you have these fans. Mm-hmm. If anyone's done that, you know. But they have these fans that are trying to dry out the house. Yeah. That I feel dry when I'm downstairs. You can't hear anyone talk. Yeah. Tori and me already get interrupted enough as it is, okay? <laughs> and now these, you got these fans <laughs> blaring Oh yeah, it's, 24-7. So it's almost it's been, worse. it started Friday. So it's been five, six days. No, but we found well the the, the whole fans process has been two been, weeks. You're right. But the fans have been up for six days. And now. like it's one of those things that they were like, oh, it's going to be three days, and we're now on three day to five six, days. Yeah. and we're just I'm done. I'm like I'm exhausted by it, and it's so draining. Like Pacific Northwest, that's my only peak. Which we, we keep on saying we need to stop talking about the weather. But the only peak that I feel like this week yeah. has been the weather, and we've been able to be outside. Yeah. 75 but degrees. with that has come allergies. So my allergies yeah. are killing me, as well as like being so dried out in our house because they've just taken all the moisture out of our house. It's I'm, a very unfortunate situation, <laughs> very unfortunate but I feel like situation. we're handling it well, though. I'm trying so hard. There's been a couple. Zach was also out of town, so Zach was in Michigan. That was actually my peak, though. I'll talk about my peak. What you you continue? being out of town. That was my pit of all pits. Was you My being peak out of was town. not being out of town in that context, but I was out of town doing our annual in-person DAAA board meeting, setting up for the next conference, taking a bigger role there. So that was fun. It yeah. was a good time. Yeah. It was good a time good, hanging it out was with a good board members. And, to be gone during this Yeah, time. and like it get, you get excited for the convention and, yeah. you know, opportunities and everything. So that, you know, and I was also spent you know like 48 hours of quiet 
ness in my hotel room. <laughs> so, <laughs> while my while my forty eight hours was our kitchen being torn apart and three yeah. children constantly asking me for things. Tori doesn't do as well with like her countertops getting torn up or anything like right. That's honestly my peak. Can I, I wait? Hold on. My peak besides the weather mm-hmm. actually has been a break from cooking. But um, I'm reaching the end of that peak. Yeah. I'm reaching the end of like, I want my kitchen back. I want to be able to cook my own meals and Yeah. We're on like these little like out. fold out tables right now. Our microwave is there. Which that was all you, by the yeah. way. That was such a good yeah. idea. I don't know why I didn't think of that while you were gone. I know. I got home and I set up some, I got some business That's done. like one thing that <laughs> Zach is very, you're, you're better at things like that than I am. Like you're very organized and you're very... I just didn't think about it. I, I think I sometimes sit in my sulking a little bit and I just get so mad well, at the like, situation that I can't. And you get caught up in the aesthetics of it. Like, <clears throat> totally. no, get some plastic tables, get some plastic forks. <laughs> yeah. And like, yes, the microwave is going to be in the middle of the living room. For, like, it doesn't, like, we're already, aesthetics, we're beyond aesthetics right now. Our house yeah. flooded. <laughs> you know, like, everything else out the window. We have three kids. All those comfort thoughts need to go out the window it's hard. desires wants it's about a need get the table get the microwave get some mac and cheeses in there unfrozen yes. mac and cheeses and let's get yes. hot throw in some hot dogs you know and like it's that's so true that's the business well, and then it's just like i i can be slightly if not more than slightly o- ocd about our the cleanliness of our house and that's another thing. I can't even hang out in the living room now because there's just all of the drawers that were in our cabinets are currently pulled out and just sitting in our living room, yeah. which our kids actually have been fantastic about not touching. They've been great. They've I thought great. for sure there was going to be like something happen, but they've been great. Our but kids have rallied. The noise downstairs, their bedrooms are right there. They have rallied through it though. Like there has been no interruption on that yeah. side. Honestly, uh, it was funny because... At school, every Monday or yeah. Tuesday, I guess this week, they didn't have news. school. Yeah, weekend news. Ja- like Jackson's class does this weekend news, and they talk about what they did over the weekend. Jackson's- and I thought for sure he was going to talk about our house <coughs> getting destroyed and torn apart. And I get the weekend news back, and it's like him talking about trading his soccer friend- cards with his best friend. Yeah, his friend <laughs> gave him a soccer card. Ronaldo. Yeah. So and I'm like, well, there's some perspective for you. At least yeah. your kids. At least I think I think we've done a good job of protecting our kids from any of the burden that we have felt the last two weeks because it has. At least in my part, it's it's felt crushing to me. Like getting the kitchen put back together, working with insurance, which holy yeah. smokes! They'll- well, we don't know what it, this is like. That's the thing. Working with insurance, you just don't know yet. Just like know. it's very like. Are like and you hear horror stories of people getting screwed over. So it's like, what do you say? What are you not supposed to say? What are you supposed to do? What order are you supposed to do things in? And I think that that's been like debilitating to me, honestly. Like I have to just leave. I have to just get out of the house and like not think about it because I'll go crazy. But I think that having Jackson talk about weekend news and talk about his best friend yeah. instead of everything that's happening here was such an encouragement. Well, also, yeah, we're also very blessed. Like I feel for everyone, anyone going through this situation that has maybe oh yeah doesn't have the resources have to like or doesn't have yeah. yeah can't go out to eat seven but days in I a row. I will say though, I will say because I got a lot of hate on social media for going on and like documenting any of this and talking about any of my frustrations. And I understand that we are so blessed to be in a position where we're worrying about our house. Like we have a house to worry about that in itself is a blessing and a huge privilege. But I also don't think, I also think I should have the space to be able like, Oh my gosh, this sucks. And this is miserable. And totally, you know, it doesn't discount my, feelings towards it all which has been really hard but anyway for let's not make this whole thing a pit because i could yeah. i could keep going well, no, on that's all what the I other pits like we haven't had heat for two yeah. and a half weeks we haven't had there's been so many things that but that's are what just, i'm trying to say ugh. like yes there are a lot of pits that would put a lot of people down yeah you know you've had your moments i've had my moments but for the most part we're trending upwards and i think that it was zach and i zach and i don't argue very often this is like breaking news maybe maybe not but we don't argue very often. We really don't. That's and I feel episode, like though. before you left for Michigan, both of us were like, leave me alone. Like we, we were, we were very just not though. like vibing and we were very much like we needed a break from one another. 
We handle things very differently. Very differently. Zach's um, always, we'll do it later. No, and like, I'm not I'll, necessarily that. And I don't want to make this guy mad, so I'll no. deal with it later. So and I, I am like, no, I don't care. I'm going to make this guy mad. I'm going to do it right now. I understood what he was saying, and then that, like, it just wasn't relevant, <laughs> the questions you were asking. So Anyway. <laughs> She's asking what color the pipe was. <laughs> it's not relevant. <laughs> I was not. Get out of here. <laughs> Anyway. Oh, but anyway, we're on the up and up there, <laughs> praying to the Lord above that they take those freaking fans out of our house tomorrow. It's probably not going to be tomorrow. It's probably going to be Friday. I know. That's they what have to they get said this today. number to 13, and we're still in the 20s or something I like know. that. Oh. Anyway, shout out to all those people that ever have had to deal with this in the past. It's miserable. I'm not trying to redo my kitchen. Everyone's like, why are you getting, why are you redoing your kitchen? You had a beautiful kitchen. And I'm like, I know. I, know. I didn't want to change it. Like, there's yeah. literally nothing I want to change about my kitchen. So, why didn't the kid's bathroom flood? That's what we <laughs> yeah, want to remodel. That's what we want to remodel. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we actually we want to lower, right now. lower their sink. Oh my <laughs> like, gosh. So, that's anyway, uh, all right, what's our topic today? Okay. So, we do listen to you guys. And we, on a previous episode, we talked about, uh, addressing like parenting kids with dwarfism. Yep. It was kind we of a broad clarify topic. clarify some stuff. Not even clarify though. It was like an additional question. I feel like I had a ton of people reach out genuinely interested on how to respond to their kids talking about people with dwarfism. So maybe not clarify, but elaborate, elaborate then on, yeah. our, on that discussion. A hundred percent. And I, I think that it's a really interesting question because I don't think it can just apply to dwarfism i think that it can apply to many different um you know differences in people so many different disabilities many different cultures many different looks anything this topic can kind of apply to all of those now zach and i really only have experience with talking about talking about dwarfism with kids because that's our experience but again i think it can kind of transfer into any other well if you educate your kids now then you know, they won't be, there are some adults out there that you're like, where is your mother? Yeah. You know, like, like this yeah. is not how you behave yeah. in public towards someone with a difference. So, Well, okay. So that's, let's start there. So that was the question that we were asked was how do you, how would you, us, how would we like people to respond to their kids pointing or asking questions about dwarfism. So like specifically being out in public and a kid points out that you look different. This is a huge issue with people. I think disability, but in the dwarf community is, yeah, like some people dwarfism handle it very well, way better mm-hmm. than me. Some people don't handle it well at all. Yeah. I feel like I'm somewhere in the middle, but there are definitely days I will avoid an ice cream shop or the toy section yeah. with a bunch of kids or like I'll avoid taking the kids to the museum. If Tori goes to the play museum, I'll be like, eh, I don't need to go. Just because it does come into my mind, man. I don't want to deal with that. Yeah. Having kids, though, has forced me. There are, have been moments. Obviously, I'm not going to let that. So that's why I say I'm kind of in the middle. I also won't let that stop our kids from having fun at the yeah. playground. I'll force myself to go stand at the playground so the kids can play and just deal with whatever shenanigans happen. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I feel like parents do need to address that more. And I think that a way that a parent can do that, and that's what's kind of unfortunate to me about the show, is because I feel like that's how the show really started out, was was you know, showing that people with dwarfism are just like you and just like other people. And so I think to start this topic, exposure is the best form of so teaching So our show your still kids. provided that, though. But I think that in the beginning, especially your show... It maybe verbalized it more. Very much, like, focused on... Well, like, it said it in your opening credits. credits yeah. Your mom said... That you guys want people to know that dwarfs are just like you and they can do just what... We didn't do that in later episodes. I don't remember. So that's what, what I'm saying. But what was the quote? Make- Hold on. Wait, you got to say the quote, though. The quote was, "Yeah, 
I'm just like you, or we could just do, what is the quote? Help me. We could do just what everyone else does, but just in a different way. Yeah. That was like like the quote. And I think that that, that alone was such a great way to expose kids to dwarfism, like showing them like, Hey, this is, I'm just saying, if we're going to dig at that, we got to make sure we know that. I still think us being the show being, we've said this in previous episodes, the visual of us being on TV helped parents have that conversation, yeah, even though we weren't like maybe verbally educating directly as much or making that direct. But connection, I think in those like early episodes, I mean, just the simple question of how does a person with dwarfism yes. drive a car? Yeah. How does that happen? Like you can only do that one time. That's the, you know. yeah. So it's not anyone's fault or anything. No, you know, you're getting a little defensive. Well, I'm just, Calm down. Yeah. no, I'm clarifying. I'm saying in like the, those first couple of seasons, it was, you know, how does, how does a person with dwarfism drive a car and how do they reach the top shelf at a grocery store and how do they navigate their kitchen if it's built for an average type person? You know, all those yep. different aspects that were showcased on your show to bring awareness to dwarfism, and that was that's really cool. Totally. So to answer the question, then how, like, so that would be like the number one way is exposure. Exposure. Like exposing yeah. your kids to differences, exposing them. So in our case, specifically dwarfism, but also in other disabilities, like seeing people who look different and exposing your kids to that. And my answer, and that's like that what we're doing, you know. Yes, and then like for me, the go to answer is that's how God made us. You yeah. know, you see someone like someone comes up to me and says, "Why am I so short?" or something. Yeah, it's that's how. God okay, well, hold on. Then let me ask you this. Yeah. Let me ask you this before we get there, because I want to talk yeah. about that, and I think that's really important. But let me ask you this: you, because this has happened to us multiple times. Also, there's a bird outside of our window right now. If you can hear that, I don't I'm know. Sorry. It's in the it's in the house. That's what the guy's talking about. They're living in this oh, wall here. Uh, okay. Well, hopefully the whole world can't hear that yeah. bird right now, but. Yeah. We're going to keep going because our kids are at nap time. Yeah. So we're going to keep going. Um, anyway, my question to you, though, because this has happened to us multiple times, is a kid is waiting in line with us and they have an outburst of, wow, why is that guy so small? Yep. Or why is that guy's head so big? Yeah. Okay. How would you like the parent to react? Um. Turn to the child and say, hey, that's not how we speak about others. That's that's just how God made him. Okay. That's I, That would be a very simple answer. Okay, yeah. Why? <laughs> well, express. Well, because in our experience, yeah. that has happened where a child is genuinely curious. They're not trying to be malicious or yep. degrading in any way. But they will turn, and that's how it comes out. It's very much like, why is his head so big? Yeah. Why is he small? Is he a dad? Why is he so, so short? How old are you? Like all these yeah. questions, right? And the first thing that the parent will do will shun them, will we'll push them aside, kind of freak out a little yeah. bit, and they get embarrassed, and it comes out in an angry way yeah. to correct their child. Yeah. And I think that that's the number one question that we've got is like how – like, is that how, is that the response? Is that how you should respond? And our answer would be like, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> because I think that, I think that kids are so curious. They're so honest. They're brutally honest. Yep. And it comes out, maybe not how an adult would ask, but it just comes out in a way that maybe sounds aggressive, but it's, it's just how kids are. Totally. Um. So I would say, yeah, you explained it. Like, there's also certain behavior that goes beyond, in my opinion, certain behavior from kids. You know, sometimes kids have different levels of understanding ne- understanding, and also need different parenting, different challenges. Right. Okay, so I understand all that. And so there's sometimes a kid behaves a certain way. And for me, I go, all right, there's there's bigger issues yeah, there. Yeah, there's something there's, else. Yeah, um, either they're just wild or like the mom and dad, you know, teaching them about people with differences, you know, maybe this isn't right, but it's not on their priority list. Right. You know. Um, And there's certain circumstances in parenting where you're not going to change a parenting style in that moment. Like you can't, you haven't set it up for. Then there's also moments of, I'm like, all right, that parenting style needs some work. 
Yeah. Like I can see how that child. So you, if you said that to the child, hey, that's not how we speak about others in public, uh, and that's how God made him. That's not even going to resonate with the child because yeah. the parenting is so opposite of that. Regardless, which right. is a different discussion. But yes, I do see quality parents at times, quality parents, but then yes, in that moment, they get embarrassed and they choose to shun the kid or ignore it mm-hmm. or, you know, get and upset. And then it, when it ignores, it usually escalates. It escalates or it drags out, <laughs> yeah. you know, and then it just, and some people might disagree with me. Some people with dwarfism might disagree. I'm not sure exactly what the stats are. I don't feel it's my burden yeah. to educate that kid in that moment. 100%. That's not my burden. That's not that's not any disability person's burden. If they choose to reach out and be like, hi, you know, I, I have dwarfism and that's how God made me. That's why I'm short. You know, that's fine. But I don't feel like it's our It's not our responsibility, you know. Yeah. And I, I, I would totally agree with you on that. I think that we do as adults, though, sometimes miss those opportunities to truly educate our kids. And in our perspective, it's not offensive. It's not offensive for a person to, when a kid asks questions like that, to then sit down or, you know, like, explain to them, oh, well, this person has dwarfism. Or even I've always said, just ask him. You know, there's been times in public where our kids will notice someone of difference, you know, someone in a wheelchair and, you know, they'll point something out. Don't you then put that burden on that person? So you saying that definitely, uh, like, it's that changes, I guess, that. Because that would be my perspective. My perspective would, why is that guy in a wheelchair? Well... Like, instead of asking me, go ask him. Like, go ask, like, what happened? Why are you in a wheelchair? I think like, certain incidences, maybe, yeah. certain contexts. I don't I don't have one in my head. But I don't know. I don't feel but like... But even, or so then even, I think that in the moment your child asks why Zachary looks different, don't get embarrassed. Like, yeah. I think that's my biggest thing. Don't get embarrassed. Kids are brutally honest. They say what they want. And... It's our jobs as parents to just slow down and go, hey, he has dwarfism. Yeah. He looks different. And and we're not going to take offense to that because even in our kids, even with our kids, they are different. They do have dwarfism. They do look different than other kids that are that are around them. We can't ignore that. We can't push that aside yeah. because it's right in front yeah. of us. So you pointing it out. Yeah, it might make us think about it more in that moment, but it's the truth. It's yeah. not. It's not like you're trying to stir up drama or, or something of that. I do feel like this is a working answer because as totally. I think about it more, there's not a re- black no, and white. One hundred percent. And as I get older, or whatever views change. A context would be me being a soccer coach. I get a new team. Mm-hmm. Yes, I will address that question. Right. Or yes, a parent could be like, "Hey, you want to know why your coach? I can tell you." But like, yes, that develops trust between the player and the coach, and that's an appropriate, right? Uh, or a teacher, I would feel like I don't know if this goes for everyone, but right. I would feel that's an appropriate time to be like, yeah, as a parent, you could say, hey, let's go ask your teacher right. about you know why does he look the way he does, and maybe we, like get educated, and then they can help. Hey, so that's you know now we can talk about it at home. We hear the yeah. answer. And that's another thing, too, is talking about it at home. Like, when your kids see something different, like, talking about it at home. Yeah. I'm thinking more of, like, the in the shopping center yeah. moment. Like well, in and the- I can remember I can remember a very specific time in my life. It well, had nothing to do with dwarfism, but we were on vacation, and we were swimming in a hotel swimming pool. And we had like, been, like, like, before <clears throat> you met me. This is when I was, like, okay, 10. Got it. I was, like, you know, a kid. Yep. I was a kid. Yep. And... And I think that this has helped me kind of change my perspective on things because this this incident, we were swimming in this pool. We were there for, you know, who knows how long. We were there forever. And there was a guy in the pool swimming and, and his kids were there and it was just a whole thing. Well, he got out of the pool. And when he got out of the pool, we realized he only had one leg. Yep. He got out of the pool, grabbed his crutches, and me and my brother must have just been like, you know, watching him get out of the pool because my dad snapped at us. My dad, I can remember being like, stop, like, 
stop staring, yeah. stop doing this. And, and I, so I, I, like my whole upbringing, I'm like, oh, you just, you don't, you don't point it out. That's basically what I learned from that experience is you don't point yeah. it out. Instead of my dad going, yes, like he looks different. He only has one leg, like something must have happened. That might've been how he was born, you know, but instead it was this like anger. And I don't know if that guy ever heard or anything like that, but I know it's yeah. happened to us where, where parents get angry at their yeah. kids and for us, it's like almost secondhand embarrassment because it's just like, it's it's so, not that big of a deal, you know? So back to like the working answer in that situation or in some of these situations, maybe it is, you know, like, hey, we don't stare. Yeah. But again, that has to be something the child's already heard before. Totally. Okay. Totally. We don't stare or that's not polite, you know? And then, but remember that moment. Other, a lot of parents forget about it and they don't follow up. Yeah. The follow up would be after. Right you know, we're away or whatever like that. Cause that's again, not our burden mm-hmm. and you don't want to put that burden on us. But then it's like, Hey, yes, that person is short. You know, that's yeah. how God made him and that's okay. Well, and you know? I think, I think we keep saying that's how God made him. And I think that that's a really foundational thing in our household. It's very, you know, we have faith. We have belief that God created all of us, and there were no mistakes made in those moments. And so I think for us, not that it's easier, but for lack of a better word, it's easier to explain things to our kids because we have faith. And I don't know what that would look like for a parent who doesn't have faith. I don't know what explaining to your child differences of other people's or even differences within themselves. I don't know what that would look like without faith, but I know for us, when our kids come to us and ask, why am I short? Why is dad different? Why does our family look unique compared to other families? It is easy for us to be like, because that's how God made us. Yeah, You know, God made us that way and God doesn't make mistakes and he has a plan for our life and he knows that we have work to do and it's our job here to figure out what that work is. Yeah. Belief, yeah, faith, you know, Jesus died on the cross, faith that God created the earth in seven days and all that as well. Belief in that creationism. Um, I think it helps us explain. Yes. Because when we're out in public and we see somebody who is different, it's, that's how God made you. That's how God made them. That's that so it is. he made the differences. Yeah. And me, that's like, where else did we come from? Yeah. You know, okay. The byproduct of that is you can explain and say, you know, well, he has a genetic makeup of skeletal mm. dysplasia from <laughs> yeah. gene 1.0 and lacking, you know, negative R7 or whatever, you know, like feel free <laughs> if that's, okay, you don't want to, or whatever. But like I'm saying, if you don't want to say, you know. Our belief is, yeah, that's how God made us. Yeah. There's also a scientific answer too, you know. It's not in as, this instant. Yeah, like, in this instant, you know, there's a there's a gene mutation somewhere in there. But, yeah, uh, you know, it does make but it. But the reasoning for a kid that's very difficult to to conceptualize. Yeah. It's very yeah. difficult to understand why all of us look different. You know, and there's part of the foundation of parenting though too. Like we have a foundation here. You know, God created the earth or whatever. And so then our kids can just build off of that. You know, there's a building block already in place, you know, and then we build, we build, we build. I do feel like our Jackson, the other kids that don't notice anything, even two feet in front of them. Oh, gosh. But Jackson. lately. Yeah. Jackson did have one incident in a restaurant. There was a person with dwarfism as our waiter. Oh, yeah. And uh, so like... Guys, and it he happens, stared. It happened. He stared, to us. and we had to be like, "Stop staring!" Like, would and I think our 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 default is always like, "Would you like it if somebody stared at you?" Yeah. Well, I think he was also excited that like it was someone like Dad, you know. But it was a. Do you think that? Do you think that though? I don't know. I want to think that yeah. there was a moment where like it is tough in those situations because he would just not stop. And, you know, we had But even, I remember taking him to LPA and there's so many different types of dwarfism and so many various forms of dwarf, like the same type of dwarfism. And I, I genuinely think that sometimes even he was like, because we've talked about this in an episode before, dwarfism is so normal in our household. Like, yeah, but, but, but then you (laughs) throw him in a situation that's very abnormal. Of course he's going to stare. Of course he's going to ask questions. That's dwarf privilege though. 
or dwarf privilege. You can stare at other dwarfs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I'm over Jackson here. Jackson can come to Alfie and stare at whoever he wants. See, but, but I don't. Average height sibling, you can't do that. See, so. I don't know though. I like as his mom. That's my belief. <laughs> I still, I though, as his mom, still looked yeah. at every situation that we ran into at LPA that I was like, "Would you like to be stared at?" Yeah. Like, don't stare. And yeah. I think that that honestly, I mean, maybe that's, that's one his people. <laughs> but i think maybe that's honestly one of the, like the foundational things you can teach your kid is don't stare like maybe that's like the yeah the beginning of or all like, of it and it's not like don't stare it's like explaining staring is rude yeah you know you you can ask questions later like and that my big point is follow up later with your kid follow up after the moment with your kid and because maybe, yes, it is in that moment. Again, I don't think you should be negative towards your child. They are yeah. curious, like you said, curious children and everything. But it is a follow-up. It's, hey, that's not, you know, yeah, that's that's a person See, there. See, and I think that's two different types of parenting. Because I think that you and I have two very different types of parenting. And I would forget about it. A hundred percent, I'd walk away and I'd forget about it. So, like, in in an instance that happened with me personally if i was by myself with our kids and something happened i'd probably sit down right then and there and be like let's have a little discussion and i'm not afraid to do that i'm not afraid to like be uncomfortable for to be honest you know i'm not afraid to stand in an elevator and have a conversation look, with the person standing next to me you know <laughs> and so i think that's too very i think you have to also be aware of your parenting style and what totally. you're comfortable with I guess I'm speaking as the person, that, like not the victim, but like yeah. the person. I don't know. I would feel uncomfortable if then I'm st- say it, it's not a passing situation, mm-hmm. and I'm standing there shopping for clothes or something. You're st- shopping on this rack, right. and now I'm overhearing this like right. random conversation. awkward conversation, <laughs> totally. and the kids probably not like maybe our kid, but like the kids probably not listening, or the kids still just, <laughs> just staring <laughs> at like. <laughs> You know, so it's like your educational point at the, in that moment. It's you're educating the behavior in that moment. Mm-hmm. And then I, I think it's just important. Like, yes, you might forget. That's, I guess, when I'm asking. Yeah. And that, like, maybe it's a different parenting style. You can't forget. Later on, it's the educational side of things. It's the reflecting. We always right. talk about this reflecting. Mm-hmm. And then maybe it's even you get home and, like, I was shopping. Oh, so-and-so, Joey, like... You know, we had this interaction and, you know, it was kind of awkward. Oh, hey, duh, let me go talk to Joey. Hey, when we see those kind of people, you know, we're not, you know, it's not nice to stare. And do you have any questions about that? Oh, yeah, yeah, that person has. And so that's the thing. Maybe the parent doesn't know. Maybe the parent doesn't even know we have dwarfism. They're just like, oh, that was, I never seen a dwarf either. Yeah, that was my And now that's a, oh, my gosh, now we're in another working answer. That's a whole other discussion. (laughs) Yeah. You know. If the parent doesn't even know what's going on. So yeah. it's a tough spot it though. Is. I don't it's- envy parenting is tough. Parenting yeah. is tough in the house. It's even tougher in public. Right. Okay. And then when you mix something that like you just neither of you have ever seen before, <laughs> like it is a tough reaction. Yeah. Okay. And like I sometimes I will put my hand up and I have a hard time. You know, sometimes parents or whatever, even kids, are they yeah. staring at me because I'm oh, a dwarf yeah. or are they staring at me because they saw me on TV? Yeah, and, and that's then it, hard. It, it, uh, it's hard because I'm like, if it's a it fan, you got to be nice or whatever. <laughs> you say okay. that like it's such a like chore. Because sometimes be it is nice. like, all right, like, I don't know. Sometimes you're like, all right, if this isn't a fan situation, I get starstruck. I'll have. Because that, that's not a negative thing. You're not maliciously being... Star Trek is not a malicious action. Yeah. But if you're staring <laughs> as an adult, you know, and if it's a dwarfism thing, now we're in malicious territory. Yeah. And now this is a different discussion. But at the moment, you're like... You know, you just yeah. so I always side on the side of okay, it's a fan. I'm just gonna say it's a fan because right. otherwise I'm gonna be just otherwise you get in your head. Yeah, I'm just yeah. gonna be grumpy the whole day. Yeah, so yeah, I'm gonna say it's just a fan. It's Star Trek, and oh, that's great. You know, yeah. like let's move on. I do sympathize for other people with dwarfism because 99 yeah. percent of the time it's either they're misidentifying that person as, as another Zach Roloff, famous dwarfism. <laughs> yeah, or I know I've been mistaken for other famous dwarfs too, though. Yeah. Um. Uh. Where was I going with that though? 
you you feel bad for them. Oh who, yeah, because it is you it know is they not, they do like there's a lot of stories of like people just randomly taking pictures of yeah. people with dwarfism. Adults are doing this, and it's like that's wild. Okay, yeah. I think I said this in the beginning of the podcast. That's a whole nother like yeah. So parent your kids now, okay? Because you, you know. Well, I think that that's one of the <sighs> biggest takeaways from this though too is. Is nothing can be done in public that's not done in private. Like you yes, cannot yes. teach anything to your children in public that wasn't already taught in private. And I think that the, the, that's like all aspects of parenting. That's that's all aspects no of life and and expectations and you practice a sport in yeah. private of the team, and then you go off on the game day in front of everyone, mm-hmm. and you that's already you have off. to have a base. You can't yeah. be spitting language to the team of six year olds game day that you never talked about in practice. Right. You know, so it is. And so I think that's the biggest takeaway is, but I think also doing it all in love, doing everything in love because kids are just genuine. They're, they're genuinely curious. They're brutally honest. Yeah. And that's, and, and they're probably not doing it maliciously, you know? And, and honestly, We've had those moments where it does get more awkward when you just ignore it. Just acknowledge it, move on. You know, yeah. it's never going to offend somebody to just acknowledge. You're right. Don't have a full on lesson. And and the positives of too. I have seen some great parenting out in mm-hmm. public. Like I've, I've been in situations where like parents are like, you know, <laughs> I think it's they'll turn their kid like, "What are you doing? Yeah. Like, you, like that's not that's rude. You know that? Yeah, yeah he's getting his own ice cream. You know, like." <laughs> What are you looking at? <laughs> you know, and well, and I, I are you? You have to be a little bit grateful for me. Why? A little yes, bit for many we've, reasons, but why? We've this been particular in situations reason? that kids have like relentlessly. Oh yeah, been after you. Oh, yeah, and I'm so good at interfering. I'm so yeah. good at being like Bobby. Let me tell you about my husband Zach. Yeah, you know, because oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not afraid. I'll sit down and like. Let's hash this out. I'm going to pull out the genetic spreadsheet and I'm going to tell you where, you know, yeah. like it all came from. That's the difference and between like an advocate though and the person with totally. it. Totally. <laughs> because I will take on that burden. Like <coughs> you say you, you don't I'll take always... on that burden at times, but in other times I don't feel like every time I go on to public, yeah. that has to be my And it's not our job. kid's burden. It's not my burden. It's no one's. It's yeah. just us trying to, as a society, be better and educate people. sometimes i feel like people like me we're, we're worn out like we yeah. just want to go get right. like pick up a coffee or something like yeah and like make a simple you know and that's the thing with people with dwarfism and disabilities i think we're always like gonna be remembered yeah or we're always like not the loudest in the room but it's like we're gonna stand out there's never a time in public that we can simply blend in like yeah. everyone else can put a hoodie on right i can't put a hoodie on i'm still four feet tall yeah they're like what's going on here either why is that child without a parent <laughs> or <it's laughs> should still, we tell that story that is a good story <laughs> but, should we tell but, that yes, story do like okay yeah. let me finish my point yeah, yeah. though it's we can it is difficult and then yeah. yes then you add on that burden I once again, though, say there are tons of people I know personally, dwarfism, yeah. people with dwarfism that do take on that and role the of thing, education like, every time. And they do, they'll go up to someone yeah. and be like, hey, I'm a dwarf. I have dwarfism, you know, this, this, and this. Hi, my name's Billy. Yeah. They're not afraid. Billy. Yes. And they are better humans than me. Oh my gosh. You guys have to go check out D, Danielle Kissers, except for now it's Danielle Sicaner. Yeah. But you got to go check out her profile because she had an interaction. Like she's so good at advocating yeah, for dwarfism. Yeah. She, that's and, what I was saying. There's dwarf. Yeah, people dwarfism. But she had this cool. whole. She had this whole yeah. interaction with a homeless man somewhere. I'm not exactly sure where it happened, but he was pointing her out because she had dwarfism and was making fun of yeah. her. And and she took it upon herself. She went home and she was so distraught about it. But then she thought about it. Went and bought him dinner. Yeah. Brought him a meal. And like yeah. basically Fantastic was story. like, I like this is how God made me. And let me tell you about Jesus. And now this guy goes to church. Well, this and guy like, was in Montreal oh and then she's in Vancouver, yeah, BC. Thing. And then he shows up at this church that she's at. Yeah, yeah. It, like a total like wild. So wild. that's another part of like the faith. And that's where sometimes and with the show, like I've always told Zach, I'm like, you have the ability to to make someone's day. Because you're Zach Roloff, yeah. but then you also have the ability to impact someone's life because you have dwarfism. And that's always been my biggest thing is 
I know that that can sometimes feel like a burden yeah, to see, you, that's the thing. but that's... light your light, like yes. share the love that you have because it could sh- impact someone's life forever. That's a good point. Our friends do have that podcast where it is, you know, let your light shine. Yeah. You have a difference, you know. And I think that that's what we strive to teach our kids. I, I get it. I don't want them to ever feel burdened by what, by sharing the love of Jesus or educating people on dwarfism. But at the same time, you better bet I'm going to encourage them every single day to do so. I'm going to encourage our kids to share the gospel. I can do and, that non-verbally though, yeah. by like not reacting and negatively. You don't have to go, and you don't have so, to go out and yeah. like say like, let me tell you about Jesus. Just you being oh, kind. Yes. yes. Just you Sorry. being kind can change And someone. I'm also talking about just explaining to someone, oh, I have dwarfism or and taking on that burden. Yeah. I can still shine my light, be positive in the interaction. Yeah. But again, I don't feel like that's saying, that message isn't also saying I have to go then explain yeah. to them and make them feel better or whatever. That's not Because my- I've said that from day one with watching yeah. your family interact with fans. And a lot of this happened in the early days where people didn't know who I was, yeah. which like I say that humbly because I don't think that everyone knows who I am now. But in the early days when we were dating, but no one knew we were dating and no one knew who Tori Patton was. And I can remember watching you interact with fans but then I'd be a couple steps behind you and hear their interactions after or their conversations after they yeah. had met you. Yeah. And I you changed their the trajectory of their day. You changed totally. and like whether hopefully it was a good a good impactful thing that you did for those fans by just being kind and open and and yeah. honest. You know, and I and I can remember like just scenarios where I was at pumpkin season and I didn't feel like being there. I didn't want to. I was tired, or you know, were we dating? Or is this your first? This, year? So this is like fast forward to oh, like yep. to like further on when it You're when it was now. like yeah, like people knew who I was, <laughs> and you know, a lot of times yeah. there was a lot of pumpkin seasons that I was pregnant. Yep. I was breastfeeding. I had a child yeah. with me, and there yep. were days that I'm like, I just don't want to go. I don't want to yeah. go, but I would remember. Those early That's days of That's people powerful. would show up and you can change their day by just yeah. being like, hey, I'm Tori, I'm Zach, like, it's nice to meet you and take a picture. Great. Have a great day. You know, that that impacted a lot of people. Totally. That's and I good, took that to heart. Reminder. Yeah. That's good. We should tell the story, though. Yeah. I know this is getting kind of long, but we should tell the story about American Gangsters. Isn't that what we saw? Maybe. Yeah. The Jennifer Lawrence movie. I think it was yeah. called American Gangsters. Hustlers. Yes. No, Hustle. Oh, shoot. What was it called? It was a Jennifer Lawrence with Bradley Cooper. Okay, wait, hold on. Was it called American Hustle? So it was a movie that wasn't rated. It was rated R. Okay, American Hustle. And it was definitely rated R. (laughs) But it was with Jennifer Lawrence, Bradley Cooper. So we're in the movie and we're walking out of the movie. Yeah. So we we watched the whole movie. Yeah. Rated R, very inappropriate movie for a child. There was no children. There was no children in this theater. And we were walking out, and I heard a couple behind us go, I can't believe somebody would bring a kid to this movie. Yeah. Yeah. And I I like can remember being like, I'm going to turn around. I'm going to yeah. turn around right now. I'm going to just say something because I'm, I'm that way. I'm, I'm like, I because they were so offended that we would yeah. bring a child to we this movie. We were holding movie. hands, too. It was oh, a we were classic. Holding hands. I wanted to be like, honey, no, let yeah. me educate you right now. But I didn't because I knew Zach would be... And also, if I had done it in that moment, it probably wouldn't have been out of love and, and gentleness and so it wouldn't have kindness. educated it anyone. It wouldn't have educated. It would have just, it would have just deepened stereotypical. Yeah. So we just let it go. We let yeah. it go. We laugh and we still chuckle about it to this day. We did not take a child to American Hustle. We, yeah. we were of age. <laughs> and I also think we were in... We went to Cinetopia, I think, for that in one of the yeah. like 21 and older... But they still, you know. Um, can I say one more thought that's on my mind? Yeah. <laughs> There's two types, three types. You know, the person with disability that really embraces it and wants to educate everyone every time they're out in public. Mm-hmm. You know, and maybe if you're vibing that from someone, hey, maybe there is a conversation to be had. You go up to them and be like, hey, you know, my son's curious about your condition. That's your choice to make in the moment, mm-hmm. you know. No, there's also people with disability and people with dwarfism that aren't as comfortable in public. It is a negative thing, you know, 
there's there needs to be grace for those people, 100%. you know. And yes, they might react negatively, and that's not to, you know, don't think then now that there's a stereotype there. Mm-hmm. You know, they are struggling mentally, you know, being okay, and just that's not their burden to then do your parenting for you kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And then there's the middle ground that sometimes, you know, where it's on, sometimes, you know, I just want to pick up my coffee, mm-hmm. you know, but there's there's that spectrum there. Either way, though, you're the parent, you know, you educate how to approach those situations in public. You know, there's most, there's not one right answer. It depends yeah. on your kid, your kid's foundation, what foundation you've already set up with your child, mm-hmm. you know. And your relationship with your child, yes. too. The the honesty and trust between you and your child, too. And like I said before, sometimes there's situations, too, that, like, I just get it. I'll, so just as I'm asking for sympathy or empathy for everyone here, also I do have empathy for some parents, too. The mm-hmm. kids bouncing off the walls yeah. and, you know, on like, yeah, there's other things going on here. You know, I'm, that we're not going to solve yeah, with we're the conversation. Good. Yeah, we're great. Yeah. You know, it's all yeah. fine. But yeah, to leave with yes. that's how God made us. You know, um, I and, think I think exposure and yeah. education. I think leading with kindness and love. Yeah, and then yeah, faith. Yep, having faith and yeah. So. Again, we're not perfect parents. No. We don't do this well. I've I've talked about it before. You know, if I came across somebody that my kid asked questions about, so, like I don't know, I don't. Know. There's no right answer. There's yeah. no right answer. I but I think that the only wrong answer is anger coming across yeah. as as shunning your child from asking yeah. questions and getting angry with your child for asking questions. That's the only time that I would say, no, you're wrong. Like, don't do that. I will say this is like a JX had just started baseball. This is like a six year old in the outfield, center outfield, waiting for a ball. Okay. Yeah. You coach them, coach them, coach them, and the ball never comes. <laughs> and then the ball finally comes. And then they forget what you coach because it never happens. Because it never happens. Okay. Like, how many of you have seen a dwarf in public or someone with a disability? You know, yeah. so it, I so I sympathize funny. with that it's as so well. True. Okay. Like, if this ever, this is such a niche thing to talk about. You can about. give them 50. 50, 100, 600 reps, <laughs> and then the ball finally gets out there 20 years later, and they forget all those reps like, because what? it just never happened. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, that's such a good, that's such a good way to put it. Yeah. I love it. Um, yeah. Oh, that was what I was going to say also. You know, I could put a hoodie on, or you can go on public. People won't recognize yeah. you. You know, but when we're together... All of a sudden, oh, we yeah. feel super famous. Okay, I feel, Tori goes, I'm humbled real quick yeah, when yeah. I go out in the public. But that's because you do have the choice. You could yeah. put a hoodie on, yeah. you know, do something with your makeup, and put it's some sunnies on. It's yeah, and you can blend in. Yeah, you know. So there, there's that's a whole nother mental. That's dynamic, why, and I dynamic. think that that's why I have taken on that role of advocating for you and for the kids. It could be a because, mental burden. Yeah, we like, can't shut I, it off. Yeah, you can't. You can never shut it off. But I. And I like that's just my parenting and my personality is I'm pretty uh, outspoken, yeah, yeah, loud, obnoxious. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't word mind <laughs> what word vomit, <laughs> word vomit. I have a lot of word vomit. But oh. all anyway. right, let's wrap this but up. But I loved, I loved that you guys reached out with those questions. I think that was such a good question to ask, and I think that this was a really fun topic to talk about and important. Well, if I'm, if I may, this came yeah. from a friend also. But it came has, from multiple people. But yes. then my friend called me up and was Who like, "Who has very good parenting, a very good, good foundation? Yes. We've wit- so even for her to have the wanting this clarification yeah. or want like having this and discussion. And I think that's what brought it to our attention. Just, yeah, it was like, man, maybe this isn't not as obvious, but maybe this does deserve a bigger conversation. Yeah. If someone that does have a very good foundation, you know, still wanted to learn more. Yeah, you know, it was a very interesting thought you know and it was the perfect way i think to kind of wrap up this season of parenting and and things that we wanted to talk about you know we're still going to talk about parenting next season we're still going to talk about parenting we're going to keep going but it was fun to like interact with you guys and talk about it and so so next week's episode you guys are definitely going to want to stick around for next week's episode we have some three very special guests more entertaining it's definitely 
no education. I maybe would like, <laughs> I would maybe suggest don't listen to it with like AirPods in because you yeah. might injure your eardrums. Yeah. But next week's going to be a fun one. We have special I'm, guests. I'm honestly like, I'm excited to see what our team does with our next one because I think it's just going to be chaotic. And yeah. It's just going to be fun. But we are wrapping up next week. But only a few week break and then we'll start up again. And then we'll start season two. So don't worry, we're not going anywhere. Yep. But I'm interested to know what people want to hear and see. But I'm also interested. We really want to have, we have some guests planned for next season. Yep. But who do you guys want to see? Who do you want to see? Or see or hear on the podcast. And do you have any questions from these first 10 episodes? Yeah. Nine episodes that, you know, maybe there's a there could be a whole new episode yeah. based on a, on a clarifying thought. Thanks for joining us. Make and sure you like and subscribe everywhere that you watch and listen podcasts yep. and tune in next week for that really special episode. Thanks everyone. Yeah. Do your best. Forget, forget the, the rest. rest. <laughs>